they did. Mm. Look at what they achieved. Mm. Sorry, that's what I think. Good for them. Good for them. Look where they started, looked where they ended up. And that their children were born free. Yeah. And they made something. This is so cool. For some reason, I always felt like we, we looked like family, even when we were kids. I mean, this means so much to me. I mean, one, she is, she is like family to me. So the fact that she, we are like blood related um, is amazing. Hello, and welcome to Roots Tech Connect 2022. I'm Krista Cowan, corporate genealogist here at Ancestry. Some of you may know me as the Barefoot Genealogist from the Ancestry YouTube series by the same name. You just saw one of my favorite things about being part of the family history community. Some of the very personal and highly emotional discoveries made by our customers. Coming up, we have a lineup of leaders in genealogy with messages about new records, new tools, and new opportunities. You won't want to miss this. Whether you are brand new to family history, welcome, or a seasoned genealogist who has been with us for years, thank you. We have prepared something for everyone. First up, please join me in welcoming Ancestry CEO Deb Liu with a message about the journey we are on as a company to build an Ancestry experience for all. Hi, I'm Deb Liu and I'm the CEO of Ancestry. And I'm thrilled to be here with all of you and part of this amazing community. Family has always been very important to me. As Chinese immigrants, my parents instilled in me from a very young age the importance of heritage and traditions, something I hope to pass down to my three children and their children and their children too. I joined Ancestry because of the company's meaningful purpose and massive opportunity that we have to create a product experience that will make family history accessible to millions of people around the world. During the last few months of my new role, I spent time deeply understanding what Ancestry is truly about. For more than 30 years, Ancestry has powered an innovative platform enabling millions of people to embark on their own journeys of personal discovery. Building on the strong foundation, we are now focused on what the next 30 years will hold. In 2022, we are continuing our journey to build an ancestry experience for all. Regardless of race, ethnicity, and heritage, we want everyone to easily discover, craft, and connect around their family story. For example, family history research can be really challenging for African Americans due to the long history of slavery in America and the lack of documentation for those who were enslaved. Ancestry is continuing to add to the new record collections so that every story can be told. This past year, we unveiled the world's largest digitized and searchable collection of Freedmen's Bureau and Freedmen's Bank's records to date, with more than 3.5 million records available for everyone to search for free. The addition of these records can be instrumental in helping the descendants of previously enslaved people in the U.S. make discoveries about their family by offering a path to trace their ancestors prior to 1870. One of the most rewarding things for all of us at Ancestry is when we hear from our customers about these amazing discoveries that they make with us. I remember after we launched the Freedmen's Bureau, we heard from one of our customers, Yakoda, who was able to identify a piece of his history that he and his family had been searching for for the last few decades. Within a few minutes of exploring the Freedmen's Bureau collection, Yakota solved a generational mystery about how his ancestors arrived in Louisiana, and it also shed light to their experiences at the time. When Yakota reflected on this discovery and shared what he found, it left family members utterly stunned, grasping the reality of their ancestors' circumstances. A single labor agreement with the Freedmen's Bureau collection 
filled in a key piece of his family history puzzle. In 2022, we will be adding new collections from around the globe, including the UK and Ireland newspapers.com marriage and obituary collections, updates to the French and Latvian census, birth, marriage, and death records. And we will also be offering a multi-year effort to index the Mexican Catholic church records from 1800 to 1860s. While historical records have always been a cornerstone of ancestry, family history is about so much more than just names and dates on a page. And that's why this year, we'll continue to offer more tools for people to craft their own family stories. One of the most powerful ways to do that is through photo sharing. I bet everyone here has a dusty container tucked away in the back of their closet or the basement filled with old photos or handwritten letters, maybe pages of a journal or family heirlooms. I have a box packed with photos from my parents and even my grandparents' old photo album. For years, I've wanted to digitize them, but I've been too scared to send them out to someone for fear that we might damage these one-of-a-kind keepsakes. Today, we're announcing an exclusive partnership with Photomine, the leader in photo scanning and archiving. Old photographs, slides, and negatives are an important key to preserving our ancestors' personal stories, their personalities, and what their life was like at the time. Using PhotoMind's simple scanning functionality and the Ancestry app, you can preserve your family memories by uploading images to your Ancestry media gallery. It is a great way that's easy and free for you to get started with your family history journey and transport photos from your attic to an archive. We are also continuing to expand our offerings around the world, and we are so pleased to welcome Janaeanet, the leading French genealogy company, to the Ancestry family. The Jenea community has members from over 150 countries that use this platform to build their family trees. We have already added millions of French birth, marriage, and death records to Jenea site, with many more to come over the next few months. We will also be adding access to public trees from the Jenea community with our ancestry community, leading to millions of new family connections across both platforms. I'd like to invite Jacques Le Merois the founder and CEO of Jenea to join me in saying a few words. Thank you, Deb. This is an exciting next step for Jenea on our community. These partnerships allow us to continue our focus of building a highly engaged and passionate community. We remain a European company with the same team of employees and the same services, but now with access to a much more substantial offer our members will greatly benefit from Ancestry's vast record collection and global network of family trees and stories. This is also a very exciting moment for Ancestry customers. Janet brings a rich community of over 4 million passionate genealogists who have had over 7 billion individuals to family trees, as well as detailed records, photos, and indexes. And even more record collection are coming in the next few weeks. If you have French ancestors, Jeanette will be a great help. Our goal remains to serve and grow our members, whether they are paid or free subscribers. By cultivating the spirit of mutual aid and sharing that characterize our community and its strengths. Another area of focus for us in 2022 is continuing to evolve ancestry from a me activity to a we activity. Family history research is often a solo endeavor. But we have learned over the years that discoveries and shared photos have the power to connect across the generations and bring family and people together like nothing else. We're developing new experiences where more people can collaborate and connect over their shared family history by investing in our mobile capabilities, interactive message center, and collaborative tree building workspaces. I encourage you to visit our learning library as part of the Roots Tech Connect to learn more about these new product features that we're launching. One of the things we're most proud of is our long-standing relationship with FamilySearch. For more than three decades, Ancestry and FamilySearch have partnered to make family history research easier and more accessible to more people. Together, we have made millions of digitized family history records available, including the U.S. Wills and Probate Collection, German Lutheran Church records, and the U.S. World War II Draft Cards Collections. Ancestry is grateful for the collaboration and is committed to investing $250 million over the next decade to release even more record collections from around the world to you. A large portion of that will be done in partnership with FamilySearch. This investment is on top of the estimated $250 million we have already invested over the past decade. 
That's half a billion dollars thanks to our partnership with FamilySearch, Global Archives, and you, our community. Most immediately, I'm excited to announce that Ancestry and FamilySearch are cooperating to bring the 1950 U.S. Census to the genealogy community in 2022. Interestingly, the story around 1950 census is repeating itself today. It was the first census processed using computer technology. Fast forward to 2022, it will be the first census digitized using Ancestry's proprietary handwriting recognition technology that will bring the index of these records to our members so that we can all make discoveries sooner. We've been working on this algorithm for years and we're excited to apply this innovative data science to the 1950 census. But while artificial intelligence technology will provide significant acceleration to digitization, it's only one part of the process. We are pleased to partner with Family Search Community to ensure the 1950 release is as complete and as accurate as possible. And I'm happy to invite the Family Search CEO, Steve Rockwood, to join me to share more. Thank you, Deb. We love our relationship with Ancestry as we together continue to help more people discover their own family story. And we're especially proud to partner with Ancestry to release the U.S. 1950 census. 10 years ago, more than 250,000 people in our passionate family search community volunteered to help index the 1940 census. And we know that even more will join us again this year as we advance from traditional indexing to actually reviewing, curating, and editing that which was indexed automatically. Together, we will take a giant leap forward in combining the power of computer assisted indexing with the collective power of crowdsourcing. You are incredible volunteers, along with Family Search and Ancestry, are revolutionizing the way we'll all bring new archives and record collections to the world. So come visit familysearch.org slash 1950 census to volunteer and learn how to review the automated index for accuracy and completeness. It's easy to get started by visiting familysearch.org slash 1950 census. And thank you again, Deb, and thank you, Ancestry, for being incredible partners in this effort to bring the census to the public. We can't wait to see how it enriches lives with rich stories and discoveries. Thank you, Steve. The countdown is on. By nature, family history is social. It is defined by relationships, experiences, and memories. Throughout Roots Tech Connect, we invite each of you to share your family stories and join our growing community. Your story matters. The countdown is on indeed. I've had a census clock on my desk for months, as if I didn't know exactly how many minutes until the 1950 census will be released. I'll see my dad on the census for the first time and maybe find that missing aunt of my mom's. If you haven't caught the vision yet, here are some of the reasons why we are so excited to get the 1950 census onto your screens as soon as possible. In the USA, census time has come round again, with 140,000 officials being sworn in for the job of counting the population. In this, the first nationwide record since 1940, the census takers get to plenty of out-of-the-way places. I'm very excited for the 1950 census to come out because it's the first census in which my parents will have been enumerated. The first name I'll type in when the 1950 census comes out, my mother's name, Lorraine DaCosta. Obviously, I can see my parents in real life as well, but I'm excited to see what their households looked like and specifically where my dad was in April of 1950. So the censuses have always been sort of a key to unlock the generations of your family. And this one is particularly interesting to me because I'll be able to see people that I've met and they'll be on there and that's pretty cool. If you think about 1950, it's relatively recent, a generation or two back. Think about someone you know that was alive in 1950. And for many of us, that's a parent or a grandparent, and we'll bring that record to you. So 10 years ago when we did the 1940 census, another company-wide project, everyone came together. And at that time, we were still manually transcribing all the data in the records to make it searchable. One of the unique aspects about 1950 census on Ancestry is how we are producing it. So for the first time, we're taking advantage of machine learning, AI technology, to get a computer to help us in what has previously been manual transcription, thousands of people typing in all of the names and dates and information in the records. 
So the 1950 census will be using handwriting recognition and brand new technology. So we're basically training a computer to read handwriting. It's an automated methodology of extracting the words and names from the census to make them searchable and hintable. Since we can't get to the 1950 census until April 1st, we are spending a lot of time creating a 1950 census from scratch, basically. Creating new forms, printing them out on paper, writing data on them that we think is uh, representative of what we'll see on the 1950 census so that that machine learning is going to be able to pick it up and give us those records immediately. Some of the biggest challenges with the handwriting recognition was a lot of the images are of paper that were not in the best of shape. The idea was if we took the worst possible case and we can make our models work on that, we're pretty sure we can handle all of it. We got creative and, and we figured out different ways to, to mutilate these documents. Stomping on them, the tearing them. Scrunched them, we crossed names out, ran over documents, or all different types of things to try and age the documents. It's an amazing piece of technology. This will help us get the index out that much faster so you can find who you're looking for. So the whole goal of everything we've done for the past two years now has been to make sure that you can come on our site, you can search for your person, and you can find their record. If you've built a tree on Ancestry, you'll get that little green leaf that tells you, hey, we got a story to share with you. You want to check it out. We actually went through and captured every single field of information in the census. The story is in much more than just the people and the places they lived, but also in their occupation, the countries that they immigrated from and other things, and that entire census told the story, not just some of the fields. We can tell you the story that is in that record completely, not just that your family lived in a certain place and time, but how they lived. And so the census is going to be a great moment to focus attention on the 1950s, but we have lots of stories to tell and we want to make sure you find all of those stories collectively through Ancestry. See? Pretty exciting stuff. You heard Deb earlier when she shared Yakota's meaningful discovery in the Freedmen's Bureau collection. If you haven't spent time with these incredible records or don't fully appreciate where they can lead you, here are Nika Sewell-Smith and Dr. Sims Alvarado with a look at this set of more than 3.5 million searchable records that just might reveal your ancestors' names for the first time. So I want to welcome Dr. Karshik Sims Alvarado, Fabulosity Historian in Heels. How are you? Hello, thank you. Thank you so much. Ancestry commissioned Harris to do some polling around the Freedmen's Bureau. And by no surprise to me and Karshik, that 72% of Americans have never heard of the Freedmen's Bureau. Never even heard of it. Additionally, nearly all of those who were familiar with the Freedmen's Bureau, 90% of them believe it was a turning point in American history and that it still impacts the lives of Americans today. Let's talk about the importance of the Freedmen's Bureau and Freedmen's Bank records. So as we all know that the, the Freedmen's Bureau was a federal agency created um, before the close of the Civil War. So in March 1865, the Freedmen's Bureau is established to provide aid to newly freed people as they make the transition from slavery to freedom. So the hospitals that are created, schools that are created for African-Americans, and what's really wonderful about it is that you're talking about newly freed people having access within the public sphere of agencies established by the federal government. Right. We began to see the mobilization efforts amongst Black people, their organizational efforts, their desire for economic autonomy, how they come together collectively and pull their resources to build community, okay? But what they do, you're talking about the people who were once enslaved, is that they show us what freedom looks like and what freedom can be for people. It really tells us what it means to be an American. That is why the collection is so important and so seminal in terms of its importance about us learning about American history from a very unique vantage point. One of the things that I, I really want you all to know and recognize is that 
the number of rolls of microfilm that make up the Freedmen's Bureau is con literally is the same amount or more as the total U.S. Census for 1880. Now, with the digitization, making it available, the three and a half million records being indexed and hintable, that's the other piece, is that this is working in the background. The algorithm is working in our favor with this collection. <laughs> that's the part that I like, personally. Let me tell you what the, the Freedman Bank does. You see individuals seeking their own autonomy. For the first time in American history, Black people were banking their own money. They were managing their own money. And from that, they built community institutions, institutions that we're still seeing. I'm in one right now. Right. <laughs> Morehouse College, right? Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. So. If you don't know where to start, I would suggest just browse. Find out where, um, just look for the state that you're, maybe you have ancestors in or just pick a random state. Louisiana is always available. Look at the letters sent and received to see what people are talking about. There are military records within the Freedmen's Bureau collection along with the pension cards. Uh, my personal favorites are the rations. The majority of the people on those rations are over age 50 in the early 1860s. So we are seeing individuals who are, were literally the individuals trafficked from Africa to the United States who survived a life of slavery or enslavement and lived to make it to get these rations. So I love those. I love the locations where they actually did their own censuses because they're not a specific form. One that I saw, and I'm gonna wrap this up, is that this wasn't intended for this, but when it listed the names of the relatives on the application form, People were stating where they last saw family. And they say, right. I last saw my sister at this plantation. Right. I last saw my brother here. Or this is where my family is at now. It's gonna provide all sorts of information that the census cannot tell us. With more than 30 billion records from more than 80 countries around the world, there are so many discoveries like this just waiting for you to dive in. In order to facilitate those discoveries, as well as help you easily craft and connect around your family story, Ancestry has spent hundreds of hours listening to you, our customers, implementing your feedback and creating new and improved product experiences. Join me now for a look at some of the ones I think you'll be most excited about. You may have noticed that Ancestry recently rolled out a new look and feel to the website. This quick visual update changes the appearance of the site and it improves site accessibility, but it doesn't introduce any new features or affect the way you'll do most things on the site. For example, we've made the colors warmer and softer and improved contrast for legibility and accessibility. In your tree, we've given you the ability to choose between light mode and dark mode. We've also updated icons and illustrations to improve comprehension and consistency across the site. Making some of these changes under the hood enables us to lay the foundation for planned enhancements, make more frequent updates, and launch new features more quickly. In addition to this, we've rolled out a new personalized logged in homepage to help you quickly get to the last person in your tree that you worked on or your newest DNA match. From the same page, you can also jump right into making new discoveries with photo hints or read and respond to the latest message. As we continue to listen to Ancestry members and implement feedback, some of the updates you can expect in 2022 include improved search results and a better family view in trees. You may or may not know that Ancestry is a global company. We have historical records from more than 80 countries around the world. And we have localized versions of the Ancestry website available in nine countries, including the US, the UK, Germany, Australia, Italy, France, Sweden, Mexico, and Canada. As a matter of fact, on Ancestry.ca, there's a toggle that allows you to go between French and English. Well, now on the US site, Ancestry.com, you can toggle between English and Spanish. This is part of Ancestry's effort in the journey to build an Ancestry for all. We've also been busy this past year adding historical record content to the site. In 2021 alone, we added more than 800 million records from countries all over the world. To see what records Ancestry has for your country of origin, it's really simple. And you use my favorite feature on the site, the card catalog. To find it, click on search in the main menu and go down to card catalog. 
From there, simply type in the name of the country or state or province of interest and click search to see a complete list of what Ancestry has available. Newest record collections will always be at the top of the list. This is also the best place to keep up with what new records Ancestry will be adding in 2022. We've got some pretty great stuff headed your way, including the U.S. 1950 census. This past year also saw an increase in Ancestry DNA communities. The short explanation about how communities work is this. The Ancestry Genetic Communities technology is able to detect groups of Ancestry DNA matches who are likely connected to each other because they share a common ancestor who comes from the same place, like Ulster Irish, or who shares a culture such as Afro-Caribbean people of Belize, Honduras, and Nicaragua. While your Ancestry DNA ethnicity estimate reflects where in the world your DNA likely was 500 to 1,000 years ago, Communities represents a connection to a much more recent place and time. The strength behind Communities is our unparalleled DNA network of more than 20 million people and the largest network of online family trees, more than 100 million of them. In 2021, we were able to expand Ancestry DNA communities to include ties to Germanic Europe, the Balkans, Western Asia, and East Africa. Updates added indigenous communities in Central and South America and connections to members in the Baltic states and more. You can now discover your origins from more than 1,500 different regions around the world, with more to come in 2022. Did you know that Ancestry is completely free to build and store family trees? No subscription required. You can also send and reply to messages from your Ancestry DNA matches and access and search more than 700 free historical record collections all free. Do you know what else you can do for free on Ancestry? Colorize and restore your old family photos. Whether you are using the free Ancestry mobile app or a web browser on your desktop or laptop, you can use this new photo enhancement feature to breathe new life into images from the past. The colorize feature will automatically detect faces and objects to determine how they should be colorized. The restore feature fixes dents and tears in photos and sharpens images for a clearer, cleaner look. Apply both features with one click of the enhance button. Auto detection of faces in your photos also helps you quickly tag photos to specific people in your tree. The originals of photos are always saved and the enhanced versions are watermarked so you can easily find your improved photos. Those photo enhancements are available on both desktop and mobile. But there's even more you can do now with new photo technology that turns your Ancestry mobile app into a high powered scanner. It doesn't matter if you're scanning them one at a time or if you have a group of them laid out on a tabletop or if you're taking a picture of an old family photo album. This new technology scans all of the images really quickly and equally as quick crops them into individual images, de-skews them, sharpens them up, and uploads them directly to your media gallery. This multi-image scanning technology capability is just one of the new features that Ancestry is working on to help you continue to preserve and share your family memories. I can't wait to grab my phone and start scanning some of my own family photo albums. The free Ancestry mobile app is a great way to keep your family tree with you while you're on the go. And it has exclusive features like photo line and ancestral mapping that make it a great companion tool to the desktop experience. Photo lines takes a picture of you and two to three generations of your ancestors and puts it together in a collage that allows you to compare facial features and share with other family members. Ancestral mapping allows you to look at your tree and decide if you want to see birth locations or death locations for your ancestors, zooming in and out using mobile pinch technology. There you have it. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> There's so much work going on at Ancestry and more to come in 2022. So be sure to check out our full What's New at Ancestry video here at the conference and keep your eye on the site for new features coming soon. Like I said at the beginning, a little something for everyone. And that's not all. Here at Roots Tech Connect, we've prepared short classes curated into tracks tailored to your needs. Ancestry 101 to help those of you just getting started. Ancestry 102 to help you get the most out of your Ancestry subscription. Ancestry 201 to help you solve your toughest family history mysteries. We've also got classes on exploring ancestry DNA, researching African-American family history, Mexican and French genealogy, and more tips and tricks for discovering your ancestors and connecting with family around the world. To find these classes, 
go to Ancestry.com slash RootsTech. I hope you'll take advantage of these learning opportunities so you'll be best prepared to make exciting new discoveries in your family tree. Of course, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and now TikTok. Share your story using hashtag MyAncestryStory. Until next time, I'm Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.